What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're continuing on with episode number 3 of Source Online, Alicization War of Underworld. Time's getting longer and longer. Uh, this one's titled The Final Load Test. So, after... So we saw exactly what happened with the raid. We saw our, uh, our uh, enemy come in. We don't know much about our enemy, except they're probably not a national army of any description. It's not from... It's not from inside Japan, at least. Uh, it doesn't seem to be anyway. Uh, but they are quite clearly after Alice and uh, recovering her instead of destroying her. So they intend to use her for something. Uh, considering why you would t try and take something like that. Probably military. It's like, oh, we can use this to be the best weapon we have and threaten other countries to do what we want or something. I mean, it, as is the most tried and tested theory as to why... Uh, you would go and invade and take someone's technology like that is because you think there's a very, very, very good chance it could be something militarized. Um, so I expect they're going to militarize it in some way. Um, let's see here. Uh, well, so yes, so at the beginning of the episode, we had Ruler Village under attack by goblins and orcs. Uh, Alice uh, has gone to attack them. Uh, she left Kirito back at the cabin, who reacted to the fact that there was an attack before she did. Uh, because I, I still feel like he's more connected with this world than uh, before, thanks to the surge that went through him. So I think he's somewhat attuned to the world, and as we later revealed, what he's he's mostly intact. It's just his self-image, the decision-making process in his mind that's like, okay, this is happening. What, how would, would you react this way to this? And you base it on your self-image, but there is no image to base it on, so it's like, I can't make a decision here. So we just don't make any decision. We do nothing. Um, hence why he's conscious in this world and capable of doing things um, just only on impulse and reflex and actions, which is why he sensed danger, impulse action, I must defend, and went to his weapons as best as he could. But even then, physically, he's not up to scratch. And that makes me wonder if just the... the the jolt that went through him has physically hampered him in some way um, as well. Because if it was just his self-image missing, he'd be able to physically move a bit better than that. But obviously it's a storytelling mechanic, but you know, I'm trying to make a bit of sense of it, justify it, because this is important when you tell a story. You want everything to be defined, so it actually makes sense. You don't want too many plot holes, you know. Um, so yeah, Alice goes to defend the village. Uh, the Dick Barbosa, the... Uh, Village chief, I guess he is at that point. Uh, no, the local lord, probably, who's got his mansion there. He's like, no, we must defend from this point, even though it's absolutely stupid and futile. Like, if you see the amount of goblins and orcs coming your way, it's like, no. Um, so, Alice just like, all right, I'm pulling rank. I'm Alice Synthesis 30. And it's just like, ah, oh, yes, I love it. Um, and she goes ham. Like, we have uh, her, uh, what's the name of her? Uh, 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 what's the name of her um, mount? I forget. Um, buh, 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 buh. I don't know. I don't know. remember what the name of uh, Alice's uh, wyvern mount. Is it a wyvern or is it an actual dragon? I don't know. Uh, in SAO. Um, Amayori. There we go. Amayori. Uh, it is a dragon. Okay, it is a straight-up dragon. Okay, cool. I, I couldn't remember if they were calling them wyverns or dragons. They are full-on dragons. Cool. So yeah, Amayori uh, goes and uh, just obliterates a lot of them. And then she goes down and just is like, yeah, no. Whoosh, and just like the the sword melts. Well, melts. It explodes into all these little pieces and just goes shattering out. It's like, ah, oh, the combat in this looks so much better. It looks so good, and I'm loving it. Um, but now we have... Uh, b -b 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 we have our villains then make their way on, and now we're here. What happens now? I, th I think Asuna's going to try and at least convince them to allow her into the, uh, into the uh, underworld. I feel like that's the way they're going to do it because they specifically mentioned that Kirito's long-term memories are the only thing that's allowing him to make any form of decisions right now um, because he does still have his long-term memories and like deep ingrained memories and I think Asuna has to be part of that deep ingrained memory because I imagine that some of it's got to do with Sword Art Online. 
Because you don't just forget about that so easily. We saw the mental impact that had on people during season one and season two. So um, I imagine she's going to try and convince them to let her go in. Uh, I don't know. I don't think anyone else can come in. Because they're not going to get to Raf because Raf is under complete lockdown. It's stranded in the middle of the ocean. The def uh, the destroyer or whatever it is. I don't think Japan calls them destroyers, do they? Because isn't that part of the thing of after World War II, Japan was like, okay, we, we don't have a navy, we have a self-defense force. Like, they always reclassified the names of things. So it's like, it's quite clearly, it's quite clearly their navy, but it's not to be called their navy. It's to be called their self-defense force. Um, just part of the naming uh, tradition after World War Two, um, I believe, right? I think I'm right in saying that. So, how would you get anyone else in there? I don't think you would, unless you have a very clever piece of technology that allows their normal headsets to allow them to dive in, but that's probably pushing it a bit. Anyway, uh, let's get into today's episode, shall we, and see what they come up with to... Um, uh, stop their attackers on Raf because they can't physically do anything to to the people on Raf. I mean, they have a straight military advantage. Like they'll just shoot you if you get anywhere near them. So you have to use the underworld to your advantage. Secure the uh, secure Alice as best you can, and then from then on, that's when uh, the self defense force will be able to act because they're assuming a hostage situation probably because they've got some pull from our enemies um so they're just not ordering anyone to go near it uh, so that's always a good thing anyway we now going to watch the episode so episode three watching this on crunchyroll as per usual link to it will be in the description uh this is a timer based format reaction so in the bottom left of the screen you're going to see the timer for the episode i'll count this down three two one play and then when i say play timer pops up you start your episode we're in sync. I'll call out OP stuff, uh, just so you know where we are roughly synced. And, uh, yeah, we'll be good to go, I think. So, with all that said, episode three, here we go in three, two, one, play. Nine days before the attack on the Ocean Turtle. We're in San Diego. Are we implying the Americans are involved? Of course, we're going to imply the Americans are involved. This is the guy that we just revealed last episode, isn't it? Oh. Oh, 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 okay. They were involved in this stuff as well. The training exercises in uh, GGO. And the guy with the sky. Okay. Okay, now it makes a lot of sense. Fair. This was them training for... I see, okay. This was them training for this. What's going to be funny as well, they were planning for this operation, but they're going to end up fighting Kirito's squadron in an irregular form, and they're not going to be ready for it. That's going to be brilliant if that ends up being the case. Mr. Miller. Oh, the NSA, okay. Glogen Defense Systems. Alright, NSA backing this. Mm hmm. So he does not know of it previously, okay. Interesting. So yeah, he's just learning of this. NSA obviously knows because he. Cloning. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, the US needs to be peacekeepers of the world. They can't let other countries do what they want. Yeah, we get it. Yeah. So yeah, US meddling in foreign affairs as per usual. Sounds about right. Yeah, I mean, raiding an allied ship. That's a very poorly animated ship, just saying. Uh-huh. 
Yeah, we were never here. This is not us. We're doing all the work, but it wasn't us. Ugh. All right. Oh, why do you have to be rapey about it as well? Come on. I'm tired of SAO having rapey characters, for the love of God. First season was bad enough, then we got season two. Yeah. yeah, based on that OP segment there, I'm 100% certain Alice, uh, Alice, uh, Asuna is coming in. We've also got a bunch of characters. I want to know about her a lot. For no particular reason. I'm, I guess we're implying that they're going to be diving in as well. Considering the visual similarities between... Mr. Miller, and whoever that main antagonist swallowing the chess piece was. I assume everyone's going to be diving in to take control, right? Also, I think I should make a bit more of a deal of the fact that her eye is now back to normal. Because that was the whole point. For breaking out of the Axiom Church, that eye was lost, essentially. But it's basically returned to normal now. Because it's now the same colour. And you go sword. Good OP. It really is. And back into the episode. Final low test. Consistent title cards. Love it. Alright, our enemies, Miss Damila. Huh? Alright, so, yep, they are locked out. Really? Okay. So it's pretty well defended, that's good. Mm-hmm. Well... Yeah. Figure out a way to actually do it. Mm-hmm. Gary? It's Gary. Come on. Gary. Who the hell's Gary? We all know it's Gary. Mm-hmm. They just want to straight breach the wall. Okay. Yeah, he won't. Mm-hmm. 24 hours, okay. That's not a lot. Nope. Mm-hmm. Okay. Probably in a long time. Okay. Not possible, we don't have the tools for that. Cool. You risk the light cube cluster. Mm hmm. We risk damaging it. Yep. They have the ID, okay. B. 
that he can't do this. Ah, honestly, I feel like this is more well protected than the Pentium. Ho ho ho. Mm hmm. Quit your moaning, just get on with it, basically. Amateur? This is far from amateur. Mm hmm. Yes, sir! Every time. Mm hmm but you've got very limited options. Can't log in with admin. They can peek, okay. Yep. <laughs> Hobgoblins? Yep. Ritter. Good name. Mm hmm. Interesting. Probably not the same. Not all of them. Mm-hmm. Well... That's true. And there's the idea to dive in. <laughs> yep. Compared to... Oh, he's got an idea though. Ah, they're looking for a higher level account that they can use from a position of power. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mage Noble, Man of Arms, Master of the Sacred Arts. Probably the big shots. Probably a lock to you. <laughs> Naturally. Okay, so they're locked out of anything. Well, probably. But what if you went after Alice from outside? There we go. Well, it's not that far outside the box. As a general, okay. Play the evil guys. Found them. Dark Knight Emperor Vector. And they're not past... Wow, really? Okay. System Control Authority. 70. That's pretty high. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Vector, yeah. Hmm. There's potential. Yeah, he's going to take that one. Naturally. Mm hmm. 
Why wouldn't they lock those ones out? Do they just not think of them? Hmm. How do you dive in? Final load test, okay. Destroy the barrier between the human and the access the... Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. It's just the self-image that's damaged. Mm-hmm. Oh. Interesting. And Asna's gonna... Obviously. Yeah, I mean, it's the natural choice, isn't it? I mean, who better to do it than her? But, well, yeah, but, mm -hmm. all out war, essentially. Mm -hmm. So it was planned for them to win. Yeah. So the defense is completely out of whack and unpredictable. Mm hmm. Right. Unlikely, but possible. Super user account. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he's... He still can. Ah, uh, they are. Mm-hmm. Yep. Experienced. What is the highest one that she's got? Really? All right. Mm hmm. Yes, they have. But they're all locked. But, did you think about... Yeah, you just thought about it. Mm. Sure, it's nothing. No, they're doing it. <laughs> that inkling you have, they're doing it. Oh, boy. No, oh, I'm sending a message to the group. Mm-hmm. Oh boy. Hello again. I forget your name, but you've been here pretty much since day one of uh, Kirito being in uh, hospitals. Oh, uh, Sinon? Back in GGO, naturally. Nice music. Paranoid. 
but probably correct. Behind you, yep. Oh, damn. Isn't this Mr. Miller? This is Mr. Miller. Fairly certain. Ugh. Why do we have to have rapey characters every single damn season? It's the one thing I dislike the most about SAO. I mean, this is creepy, but in the context of GGO, it makes so much sense. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, we're all going to meet up. So, mate. Mm-hmm. So, now they're all aware of the situation now. Uh, yeah, but optimism can only go so far. Mm-hmm. Not really. Okay. How, though? That's what I wonder. Oh, right, we're three hours after. Okay. Now I'm going to dive in with the uh, Dark Territory accounts. They're going to be out of their depth, though, really. Because they won't be able to fully utilize that, I don't think. What is this visual? Interesting. Obsidia Palace. Okay. Ooh, okay. She's a dark knight. Okay. Hmm. Yep, the Pontifex is dead. Mm-hmm. It true. Oh. For peace, okay. They want to make the Dark Territory wants to make peace with the human empire. Interesting. I wonder what the I wonder what the reason behind all that is. This is just this lord's opinion. Oh, Edie's going to be playing over this. Probably. There definitely is a chance for them. Okay, know of Bakuli Bur and maybe have a history? Okay. Council of Ten. Oh. Hmm. The Goblin Chiefs, York Chief. Oh, hello. Interesting. So we have... Okay. Okay, okay, okay. That's very risky. Mm-hmm. But... What other choice do we have? Okay, their backstory. Okay.
You what? Oh ho ho! Oh ho 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 ho! Okay! <laughs> wow! I. <laughs> didn't expect that! I didn't. Oh? Oh boy. Farmer? Oh. I feel like I recognize that voice. And here they are. The Emperor and the Dark Knights. Alright. Hmm. Indeed. Dark Territory. Okay, we're going to see the perspective of them next time, I think. Okay. Wow. Uh, this got way more interesting. Okay, this got way more interesting because... Okay. It's Dark Territory versus Human Empire, right? Not the the entirety of the Dark Territory is not all aligned, which makes a lot of sense because it's an amalgamation of monsters. You've got mages, you've got goblins, you've got orcs, you've got probably some form of demon or devil entities. You've probably got a whole range of monsters that have just coalesced into the Dark Territory. There's a Council of Ten, superseded then by the Emperor. And one of the lords of the Council of Ten here sees this as an opportunity for peace and seems to believe that there are other lords on this council that would also vote for peace should the option present itself, which, with the Pontifex dead, is entirely possible. So by removing three of them, no, four of them, sorry, two goblin chiefs, an orc chief, and the mage woman, who appears to know the secret of immortality and would become emperor if given the chance, or empress at that point. Um, if we remove those four, it means we then have... Well, what do they need to pass a vote? Does it have to be a unanimous vote for peace? Or does it have to be majority vote for peace? Because if it's unanimous, then they need uh, the other five to vote yes as well. If it's just a majority, they'd need another three of them to vote for peace, because there'd only be six left, so they'd need themselves and three others for majority. I'm not sure how the Council of Ten works here. I just know there's ten of them, and we want to eliminate four of them to bring it down to six for reasons of peace. Interesting. And we even have a romantic attachment here already, uh, which, that was out of left field, like... I didn't expect that, like, that's not at all what I expected to happen, but uh, it seems genuine, which is nice. I mean, I'm all for a genuine relationship in SAO, instead of all the rapey vibes we've had with this entire damn show. Um, but yeah, this is interesting. Very, very interesting. Okay, so not only do we have the Human Empire preparing for a defense against the Dark Territory, which is a planned attack from the Dark Territory... We also have the internal struggle of this lord who... Did we get his name? I forgot his name. Uh, what is his name real quick? Uh, let's see. Where is it? I don't think I see it anymore. That's a shame. Uh, yeah, okay. Let me just go back into the episode and find it. All right, here we go, back to the start of the scene. Back at the Obsidian Palace. Lipia Zankal, that is our Dark Knight, 11th rank. And then the Lord's name is... Do we get a name card for him? Dark Knight Commander Vixer Ulshasta. That's a good name. Uh, do we have any... It doesn't seem like we've got voice actors for them, annoyingly. I kind of would have liked that, but whatever. I don't see them here listed on any list. Shame. Uh, they might be listed on Mal. I'll double check over the course of the uh, next couple of episodes. Um, and now that makes sense, the line. Don't call me your lord when it's just you and me. 
implying a romantic affiliation there. Officially, I'm still on duty. Okay, that was a very subtle... Credit where credit's due. That was a very subtle way of entertaining the idea that they are romantically involved, or they are in, an, in a relationship that goes beyond just being lords and knights. Nice. Okay, that was a clever bit of mini foreshadowing to that moment. So, yeah. Um... Hmm. Okay. The Chancellor of Dark Mages Guild. She's going to be the real problem here, probably. How did she get her hands on the Im Immortality Secret, I wonder? Hmm. That's a question. Yeah. So I think we're implying that those four would never have peace. The other ones that we haven't mentioned would go for peace if the option is there. At least try to get peace in that case. Uh, the Integrity Knights would vote for peace because... Especially now. Uh, now that uh, Pontifex is dead. They're training up the human army as best they can. The human empire. Their army. Uh, but they know that a coordinated attack from the Dark Territory would be just too too much to surmount unless they had some real stroke of luck, which is going to be the fact of Kirito and Asuna working together. That There you go, you have your ultimate weapon already, along with Alice. Um, so... Yeah, I like this. I like that there is an internal struggle within the Dark Territory as well. It's not just a uniform, Dark Territory, evil people. Ah. But it makes me wonder why they would want peace. Like, what is their desire here? Also, why are they in the Dark Territory? They appear to be humans. Why are they in the Dark Territory? The Goblins and Orcs make sense. Uh, the uh, uh, Chancellor of Mages. Dark Mages. I mean, if you're called a Dark Mage, it ultimately implies you're going to be an evil character, unfortunately. Um, but that makes me wonder about the other groups. Like, what other groups are under it because if it's only goblins orcs and dark mages that would be a problem unless they're the easiest problem to get rid of i don't know um who else is in the dark territory that would vote willingly for peace because if it is other monsters like demons and devils they wouldn't want peace no way hmm but i'm sure that plan for just using the 10 the the 10 to vote for peace i'm sure that's now all gone out the window now that uh evil emperor and dark knight are now here so i imagine whatever they planned is going to get a lot messier for them to deal with because they've now got to go against the emperor which i don't think is going to go well but we'll see i can almost certainly guarantee he's going to die and she's going to break down emotionally in some way I see that happening already. I, I already see the potential of that threat. Like, you went out of your way to have this romantic moment of connection between these characters. You, If you're going to establish that sort of connection to a character very early on in meeting them, it's likely you're going to exploit that to, uh, to either enforce a character in a decision they make or the separation of them is going to enforce something in the characters yeah, as an act of vengeance as uh going above and beyond their normal limits something like that so i'm fully expecting one of them to be killed off in this show now it's just the way my mind works when i think of what you possibly could do with that information but i'm very very curious to see where they want to take that because that makes this entire Dark Territory so much more fascinating than just, oh, we're evil, we're going to control all our evil minions to go take out Alice, rah! It's like, no, there's actually internal struggle within the Dark Territory. Approved. Very much approved. So, uh, with all that said, that's going to do it for this one. Thank you everyone for watching. Uh, I had to edit halfway through this one because there was a little bit of an issue. Uh, about 11 minutes in, you may notice there was a little bit of a cut. 
uh, 11 minutes into the actual episode. There was a bit of a cut because uh, Crunchyroll just decided to die for some reason in the middle of that episode, which is always convenient. Um, so hopefully it wasn't too noticeable and hopefully the sync stayed in check for the most part. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed the episode as per usual. Leave a comment on what you thought of the episode and how the show's going so far. Uh, three episodes into the second half of Sword Art Online Analysisation. Uh, if you want to have a more in-depth discussion about the show, my Discord is the place to do it. Uh, I have dedicated channels there for discussing this show, all the other shows I watch this season, etc. Um, and don't forget to hit subscribe to see more of this show. I'm going to do one more episode today. Uh, we're going to do three episodes today. We did episode two last. This is episode three. I'm going to go watch episode four right now. And uh, next week we'll be continuing on till we're caught up before uh, part two of War of Underworld airs in summer 2020, about three weeks from now, roughly. Thank you everyone for watching, and until next time, see you guys later.